Statistics indicate that 90% of new businesses die within the first five years. Question is, why is this so? Over a million businesses uh, failed in the last couple of years, according to Smedam. And uh, these businesses fail during these first five years due to some intrinsic and extrinsic factors. Uh, for instance, poor knowledge of the business environment, the inability to develop an adequate strategy to take advantage of opportunities and respond adequately to macro and micro headwinds. Number three, poor management skills and lack of adequate talents. These widespread failures stem predominantly from issues relating to access to finance, poor or inadequate market research, poor or lack of business management skills, unfavorable policies, regulated climate, and many more. When it comes to development challenges for MSME finance, uh, they differ from one country to the other, and development challenges differ, and the context for remedy and for addressing these challenges also differ, and therefore the solution would differ, and it has to tailor to the uniqueness of these challenges. In Nigeria, the uh, biggest country in, in Africa, the MSME space is huge and also underserved, um, and there's a lot of efforts that need to play up and be in place in order to support MSMEs to grow and to create jobs. For those uh, informal sector players, the key challenge is that there is no data, there is uh, no credit history or no financial statements that can help the financial institutions to appraise their credibility. You'll see it's mostly a one-man business with no succession plan, no clear financial literacy, and so there's no difference between what should go into the business and what can be used. A number of entrepreneurs lack financial um, knowledge. What they will require financially to scale up that business is also something um, that is a bit lacking um, in that sector. I think the first you know, uh, thing to think about is the growth in population versus the economy. So you see a population that is growing faster than the economy. So you do some intervention, you know, based on the projection that you have at the moment. But before you know it, uh, you see the multiplication. For instance, in Nigeria, the growth rate for the population is 5.5. The economy is hardly doing 3%. Business is the activity of making a living or making money by producing, buying or selling products and services. Businesses contribute about 70% of jobs globally and 90% of these are driven by micro, small and medium enterprises, popularly known as MSMEs. It is a fact that MSMEs play a pivotal role in shaping global economies. Similarly, in Nigeria, MSMEs accounts for a major share of industrial production and exports, contributing 48% to the GDP in the last five years, according to a survey by the National Bureau of Statistics, NBS. With over 40 million registered MSMEs in Nigeria, these businesses account for about 50% of industrial jobs and nearly 90% of the manufacturing sector in terms of the number of enterprises, thus stimulating economic growth and providing employment for large sections of our society, including women, youth and poor communities. However, despite their innovation, dynamism and tremendous contribution to the GDP, MSMEs continue to face fierce threats to survival, especially when it relates to accessing sustainable financing. Several reports by global development agencies agree that obtaining finance, finding customers and infrastructure deficits are some of the most pressing problems MSMEs face in Nigeria. It was against this backdrop that the federal government of Nigeria, alongside other global development partners, established the Development Bank of Nigeria, DBN PLC, in September 2014. But herein lies a huge opportunity for development finance institutions, such as the Development Bank of Nigeria. Because together, 
we can collaborate to improve access to finance for businesses, enhance the capacity of businesses through capacity building uh, programs, support with market linkage opportunities, amongst other initiatives. Now, less than 10% of these needs are provided by the financial sector at the moment. And that is why the role of DBN in providing additional access to finance is critical. In the last five years, DBN has partnered with over 29 financial institutions to disburse over 600 billion naira to more than 237,000 MSMEs in Nigeria. Of course, despite these laudable results, there's still much more work to be done in reducing the bottlenecks of MSMEs uh, in order to enhance their access to finance. DBN seeks to fulfill three key mandates. The first one, lending. DBN increases access to finance for MSMEs by lending to participating financial institutions, that is, commercial banks, microfinance banks, and other financial institutions for on lending to Nigerians on the served MSMEs. The second mandate is capacity building and technical assistance. DBN, on the other hand, provides capacity building opportunities for MSMEs to develop their business management capacities and also, on the other hand, provide technical assistance to participating financial institutions to augment their capacity and willingness to lend to the MSME segment. The third part of our mandate is partial credit guarantees. DBN has a wholly owned subsidiary, which is saddled with providing partial credit guarantees for participating financial institutions to boost their risk appetite in lending to MSMEs. DBN was set up by the Federal Government of Nigeria in partnership with several international financial institutions, such as the World Bank, African Development Bank, AFDB, KFW Development Bank, Germany, Agence Francais de Development, AFD, and the European Investment Bank, EIB, to address the major financing challenges facing micro, small, and medium-scale enterprises, MSMEs, in Nigeria. It's a partnership that has been evolving over the past five years. It's a partnership that has been built based on respect, on trust, uh, on a common goal and objective to help MSMEs in Nigeria and to address this key challenge that Nigeria needs. Uh, also, DBN have respect to the international expertise that we're bringing to address this key challenge that Nigeria is facing when it comes to access to finance in Nigeria. When it comes to development challenges for MSME finance, uh, they differ from one country to the other. Um, development challenges differ and the context for remedy and for addressing these challenges also differ and therefore the solution would differ and it has to tailor to the uniqueness of these challenges. In Nigeria, um, biggest country in, in Africa, the MSME space is huge and also underserved um, and there's a lot of efforts that need to play up and be in place in order to support MSMEs to grow and to create jobs. With this objective and with this motivation, we've devised a solution that builds on good governance, sustainable institutional framework and also a sound regulatory capacity and regulatory framework that the CBN has put in place for development finance in Nigeria and DBN was able during the past five years to rise up to this challenge and to build a trust relationship and uh, to build a sustainable relationship with the banks in Nigeria and also offer a solution that can, built upon, can be built upon and can be leveraged uh, to help Nigeria face development challenges to support MSMEs and create sustainable jobs. For those uh, informal sector players, the key challenge is that there is no data, there is uh, no credit history or no financial statements that can help the financial institutions to appraise their credibility. So I think one of the key next steps is to scale up the credit infrastructure, strengthen the credit infrastructure, scale up digital financial services to ensure that um, these uh, companies can be properly appraised. And secondly, I think there is a need uh, to expand the access points, leveraging the agent network to ensure that financial inclusion reaches every part of Nigeria, whether it's urban or rural. And thirdly, there is a need to continuously provide technical assistance to financial institutions, whether it's banks or microfinancial institutions, to ensure that they do understand the business model of these MSMEs in order to cr uh, provide credit to them. We're happy to see that DBN was able to evolve and was able to grow during the past five years. 
and to fill a part of a broad gap or a large gap when it comes to financing MSMEs and addressing development challenges, the market failures to finance MSMEs in Nigeria. And with thanks to the competence, dedication, and the professionalism of the management and of the board, and also to the ability of the regulatory uh, framework that CDN has put in place to rise up to the challenges of, the, of supporting MSMEs in the country. Although established in 2014, DBN commenced formal operations in 2017 with a vision to be Nigeria's primary wholesale development finance institution, promoting growth and sustainability. DBN had three key mandates. Firstly, to increase access to finance for MSMEs by providing lending facilities through the participating financial institutions, commercial banks, microfinance banks, and other DFIs for on lending to the MSMEs. Secondly, to provide capacity building for both the participating financial institutions to enhance their ability and willingness to lend to the MSME and for the MSMEs themselves to equip them with fundamental skills required in managing a successful business. Thirdly, to provide partial credit guarantees for participating financial institutions to encourage them to take the risk of lending to the MSMEs. Over the last five years, DBN strategically pursued these three mandates with compelling results to show for it. Since 2017, DBN has disbursed over 512 billion Naira loans to over 225,000 MSMEs, with 67% being women-owned firms and 27% being youth-owned businesses, resulting in the creation of over 150,000 jobs. DBN has in its bid to address the financing constraints faced by the MSMEs continued to expand its partners across the six geographical zones of the country as a way of driving developmental impact across zones. It has since expanded its participating financial institutions from the two it commenced operations within 2017 to about 22 today and still growing. DBN has been a strong supporter of our aspirations as a bank in FSDH. And so the conversation with DBN FSDH has only been about one and a half years. Um, but in that one and a half years, it's been impactful. It's been the journey where we've gone together. And we've sat down and looked at products, um, services, new areas that we feel are clients and potential new markets that we want to go into require and we've been able to work with DBN to tailor those products to meet our clients' needs. So for me, it has been an excellent experience these two years with DBN FSDH and I'm assured that this will continue for the next number of years too. Uh, we have a very unique relationship with um, DBN way back almost five years now. Um, they have been able to provide us with um, wholesale funding for which we own lend to our various customers, entrepreneurs across the country, uh, particularly those that are into productive sector uh, across the country. And this relationship has been on uh, for about five years. So in a typical way, they provide us with a wholesale fund, and then we own lend to these entrepreneurs that you know, require such uh, support. Uh, aside from that, they've also been able to provide us with some technical assistance uh, you know, to make sure that we do the business in the best way possible, uh, you know, in line with their own policy and expectations. In addition to lending, DBN has also been involved in several capacity building and sustainability initiatives. Over the last five years, DBN has trained hundreds of MSMEs as part of its capacity building initiative through the DBN Entrepreneurship Training Program with partners like Google, held annually in Abuja and Lagos. Participants were lectured on the formulation of company ideas, development of business plans, basic accounting and management, digital marketing techniques, basic promotional tools, access and business prospects, and presentation skills by business professionals. 
DBN is also actively engaging its stakeholders through a network of strategic activities to deepen financial inclusion, some of which include DBN MSME Summits in Meiduguri and Kanu, DBN Annual Lecture Series, DBN Techpreneur Summit for the Tech Industry, DBN International Women's Day, DBN World Environment Day Celebration, Sustainability Initiatives Competition, DBN Service Ambassadors Awards to reward the high-performing participating financial institutions, Sponsorship of Entrepreneurship World Cup and Dragon's Den, Trade Shows and Exhibitions. The story of DBN's five years of impact cannot be complete without hearing the testimonies of business owners who got funding from DBN through the participating financial institutions. Here are a few real-life stories. We are in the manufacturing sector, especially in the fast-moving consumer goods. So we are into households, things that you can easily find and use in the houses and all that. That's what we're into. The challenges were just simple. Like I said, the raw materials needed for this particular production is enormous. You know, so the lapsas, the sodium sulfate, silicate, and the rest of them. So these are very expensive raw materials. So you need a lot of capital to be able to get them in and use them. Now, prior to the DBN, we were actually running well because the management was right. The marketing uh, analysis were done, so it was also going well. But we discovered that way into the line as, as a result of the uh, inflationary trends in Nigeria, prices were tumbling up every day. The dollar price was not helping any matter. So we needed to get it something that could help us to cushion the effect and be able to get in those raw materials. And of course, if you cannot get them in bulk, it's another issue. We heard about DBN through our bankers, Fidelity Bank. I would say that it was what the decision to go for the loan was to help our working capital position. You know, being an FCMG in the sector we are manufacturing, the, the raw materials are much. The prices are enormous. Most of them come from abroad. So you need a lot of capital to support it. So that's why I went for the loan, to get a loan that could help us to support these uh, working capital needs. DBN is a point of intervention to our business. And they are intervened at a critical condition when the need arises for us to expand. I've been with DBN loan for almost five years. As I've said, the loan has always been coming at appropriate time the need time. And uh, since that, initially when we got those, the first loan, we, were, we used it for desk and tables for students. But as of now, the one we got through the FCMB, we have used it to expand the school. In terms of classrooms, we are building a new site, which we have assessed it. And as at present, we have also got an approval for us to expand our hostel. Well, I will encourage, especially those of us in educational institutions, because of the liberality, the interest rates, the, the timing of those loans that you don't need to go through stress. And above all, I will, when you get it, the only thing I would just advise my colleague when I'm advised that they should make sure those loans are paid back as when due. If the DBN has given us a special interest rate, that you cannot get in commercial bank. So it is also so too that we should, as the time due, we assess it. And I, I trust DBN, when you finish another one, they are already giving you one. And it has all really helped to expand the scope of our businesses. We got the DBN loan three years ago, and we are already in 10 years of our, seven years of our mission then. So we actually have some processes before the loan. Apart from the loan, DBN was able to facilitate the training with the LBS. After attending that training, I can tell you that we're able to garner some capacity and some knowledge. And I think that has actually aided our business growth. We're very strong in pastry, bread and food. Uh, we are partners to retail brands like Prince Ebana, 
Just Right and the other emerging brands in Nigerian supermarket retail. Currently, our staff strength is more than almost 100. The first loan they gave us was 60 million. So getting that money was able to give us opportunity to deploy close to like five branches in a single year. The three of us that own this business, Adelo Kun, Abiodun and Steve Oladaye. Since we got in this loan, I think we've really been able to use a very good judicial use of the funds. So I will encourage them to go, but also encourage the banks to also make effort to also support growing businesses. We've been involved in uh, the environmental aspect of crude oil exploration in Nigeria. We conduct EIA, Environmental Impact Assessment, Environmental Evaluation Report. We respond to spill. We also do what's called soil remediation. But in line with um, our dream to diversify, Smith Park gave birth to a group of companies called the Imperial Group. We've been banking with uh, Fidelity for a good number of years now. Uh, it was when they were actually the people that introduced us to DBN. When we are looking for facilities to actually get some raw materials to do our own. So it was actually Fidelity Bank that introduced us to DBN. What actually made us to go for the DBN facility was just to increase our raw material base because our plants were already running. We actually appreciate the DBN facility because still today it's still better than the commercial bank rates. Bekemo farm is made up of two sections of broiler layer poultry farm. We have a layer section and the broiler section. The layer section is about 120 to 140,000 base capacity, while the broiler section is 25,000 base capacity. The layer section, we started our production system from 4 a.m. We filled the base around 4 a.m. 4 a.m. After feeding around 4 a.m., the uh, pen attendants spread the feed for the base to be evenly spread for them to eat. And my, myself, the manager, go, do go around by morning and inspect the base and see maybe if they are healthy. And if there's any weak one that is sick, we isolate it and take it to the sick bay. After treatment, after fully recover, we return it back to the pen. Bekemo, I like Bekemo Farm because the Bekemo Farm is provide job to many staffs around this village. Many staff are benefiting from the village. Myself, I've been working with Bekemo Farm now about four years, and it has given me free hand to manage the farm. I control everything in the farm, which gives me joy because I like this poultry business. After working with Bekemo, I wish to be on my own. I have my own poultry farm as well. So I'm happy doing the job. I have passion for the business. We build tanker trailers, reservoirs, like uh, storage tanks, and also into structures. We are not having more challenges as regards to what we produce because we don't have complaints from our, our clients. Whatever we deliver, they also come back to even say, to even commend us for what we have given them because we have built in some systems, some materials that even in our tanker trailers, if there is any misfortune, either by the recklessness of the drivers or other, other issues that could even result into accidents, the, 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 our tanks doesn't spill uh, liquids, doesn't spill emulsion. And that is basically due to the type of materials we use. We, we use materials from 4 mm up to 5 mm and 6 mm materials, jumbo sheets. And our workers, they are not letting us down. They are making it possible for us to be proud of them and then to be proud of the company and to be proud of the, com of the bank that have assisted us. And uh, we have been trying our best in this area as manufacturers, especially when we got the loan from DBN. We, that has assisted us tremendously. We're able to build a direct labor. With direct labor, we're able to build this factory house here. We are having two major workshops one here and one at the other side. Despite the harsh economic realities, the COVID pandemic and other volatile environmental and political factors, DBN remains committed and will continue to facilitate sustainable socio-economic developments through the provision of finance to Nigeria's underserved micro, small and medium-scale enterprises as well as small corporates through eligible financial intermediaries. Yeah, on behalf of my chairman, uh, Chief Maurice Abazir Maidi, 
Onyema Bazir, the board, the management and staff of New Revoke, I want to congratulate DBN for a very wonderful operation for the past five years. They have been there for companies that have helped businesses in Nigeria and are still helping it. So I pray that God will empower them to continue to do more. Well, on behalf of uh, Team Deep Educational Service, I use this opportunity to congratulate DBN for a worthy thing they are doing in the lives of the future generation of Nigerians. DBN, congratulations, you will celebrate 6, 7, 10, 20, 30, 50 years. We, as uh, Smith Park, Environmentals Limited, and the Imperial Group, we congratulate you on your marvelous work you've done in the industry. Congratulations, and we wish you guys many more years to come, many more successful years to come. Thank you. Yeah, I, I would say congratulations to DBN. We're hoping that they will continue to be in business and ensure that, by and large, I think I thank them for all the capacity building exercise and the financing of the businesses in Nigeria. I want to congratulate the board, the management and staff of uh, DBN for five years of excellent service to Nigeria. And I want to wish them, you know, more glorious years ahead. We're looking forward to partnering with them. They've been a very good ally in the journey of financial inclusion and provision of financial services, especially to the bottom of the pyramid in the country. And I just look forward to them doing more you know, and getting to greater heights. So congratulations to the board and management of DBN. The first five years, like I've said, have been very impactful. SMEs definitely have felt the impact of your entrance into the market. I can only wish you well um, for the next five, 10, 20, multiples of those years. And um, the market is looking out for you. And we continue to expect, you know, new ideas, new products, more innovation and uh, better interest rates from you. All the best to the end. On behalf of the board, management and staff of Axion Microfinance Bank, I want to wish DBN happy five years anniversary, continue to impact life, continue to drive a financial inclusion program. First of all, happy birthday, DBN. I think it's been a tremendous five years and it's such a privilege to work with a group of a highly professional and highly dedicated team. Together, we are trying to tackle one of the most biggest challenges uh, of Nigeria, MSME Finance, and we feel very privileged to be a partner with you on this journey. And um, wh whatever you do, um, count on us. We will continue to be your trusted partner down the road. Again, congratulations. Uh, I'd like to tell DBN congratulations for reaching this milestone. Um, it has been uh, a tough ride, but with their competence, dedication, and their professionalism, um, it has been steady to the extent possible. Wishing you continued success, continuous growth, and continuous dedication to support MSMEs in Nigeria. Therefore, as DBN celebrates its fifth anniversary, the bank is proud to be making an impact by changing the narrative of the fact that most small businesses die in their first five years through its capacity building and other support initiatives. Consequently, as the bank navigates into the future with renewed energy, DBN is reiterating its commitment to its triple mandate of providing financing, building capacity, and providing credit guarantees with the ultimate agenda of transforming the landscape of MSME financing in Nigeria. Development Bank of Nigeria Financing Sustainable Growth